it's kind of this assumption that every person who's an immigrant here or the child of an immigrant is meant to come out of like this cocoon and finally be the American butterfly that they're meant to be. And, and, and that's not what this is. This Ramadan, I really want to do it the right way, man. It's been a weird year. And I feel like if I can just do this the right way, I can figure my shit out. I'm not going to look at porn, nothing. I just want to commit. No porn. This guy says gonna, no porn. It's going to be tough. No way. Me. Impossible. Me growing up as someone who, um, you know, is first generation of my family to be here. You know, my parents came from Egypt. Uh, I've seen a lot of stories that have immigrant kids and families. And I always grew up seeing these things, or, or probably more recently even than, than when I was actually growing up, seeing representation. But recently you see them, and, and a lot of the tension of the story is seeing somebody who wants to step away from their family or who wants to fully embrace the culture of being in America or, or for lack of really a better way of putting it, it's like, hey, mom and dad, like, I want to be white, you know, and, and, and you can't stop me. And, and, and that kind of really being the narrative that I never really connected with because I've always felt like I really like my culture. I, I believe in my faith, um, but I also am very much, you know, in the present moment. And, and I did grow up in America and I do want to do the things that, you know, my peers are doing. And why I think this show is important is that that's the tension. The tension is how do you hold on to these things? You know, what are the nuances of being someone who does want to be part of their culture and, and, and also, you know, is kind of stepping it forward in their own way and however they're dealing with that. Um, I find that to be something that I never saw before and that's why I think this show should exist. Uh, I mean, there's so many shows uh, and, and, and I get that, but I feel like that's like what we're really, yeah. it's what, it's well, yeah, and, and that's really what I'm, you know, excited about sharing with people. Well, it, I remember going in for this character once they were, they wanted to, they actually like wanted me to play it. I was like testing for it. It was like this whole thing and he was um, a gay Muslim sidekick mm -hmm. and I was like wow these are two groups that we don't know a lot about this was also a couple years ago I'm like these are two groups that each deserve their own show and then there's a third show that's about a gay Muslim and I'm going to be like relegated to being the side character in a writer's room that not only didn't have any Muslims but didn't have any gay people like I was like asking I was like well I know there has to be a gay writer here no, no like there wasn't and so these are the types of ways that like representation is like grouped in you know it's like okay we're gonna do all these things on one guy who comes into the cafe and 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 we did it we checked off the box Rami do you want to stay alone forever? Mom, you can't just walk up to a Muslim girl and like start spitting game or something like, what, what am I supposed to say like hey can I get your father's number Yes, why not? And it's important to draw lines in certain places. I think a big place I really drew a line was none of the family members are really my family members. I mean, they're an amalgamation of culturally a lot of people that I've known and things that I've seen and felt uh, and very much leading with like the raw emotions of any of those characters. So it's not real in that sense. And even the things that my character goes through, there's so much emotional truth to all of it. Um, all of it, you know, are things that I've felt and thought about, but really kind of expanded. So it's like in real life, you'll feel something, but then you were raised a certain way and you were taught certain things, so you respond accordingly. A lot of this show is, well, what would I have acted like if I didn't know better? Or what would I have acted like if I didn't have an experience that taught me better? What's it like to actually sit in the problem longer than you do in real life? And, and that's where the line, you know, shifts. I want to know who I am. I, I want to explore. You're like the kids in Egypt. They throw down the government. Big revolution. Then what? No plan. You know, to define being a millennial is like living in this time where you are really socially conscious, I think, of a lot of things that are happening, but also really strapped for the means to do anything about it. You know, we're, we're in this place where, you know, our income is not the same as it was for our parents and the amount that things cost is way different too. There's a financial tension for my character in the show. And there's also this, you know, obsession with who we are and what we're putting out into the world. Like we all have a profile, but beyond that, that really just bleeds into the way we think. It's like, who am I? What's my impact? You know, you know, I want to do something important. What is it? I don't know. I, I, did, I dropped out of school. But, and, but even if you didn't, I mean, there's, there's this... Um, idealism that I think is really beautiful because we want the world to be better and we and we want things to you know move forward and I do think 
the way we are progressive can be really awesome, but it also gets met with this reality. And there is this like, whether it be like, you know, the actual environment that is like decaying around us or just actual resources and population, there's all these things that are kind of on our minds that sit on our minds. And I think that those conversations actually lead to what I do think is like a spiritual movement amongst people. It doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, okay, you're of the monotheistic, you know, Christian, Jewish, Muslim that we all know about. That's what this story is about because I find that to be, you know, true to my life and I find that to be really important and real. Um, but I think it's for a lot of us. It's just, just like trying to step into mindfulness, trying to step out of ourselves. So I, I think these are, you know, it's a, it's a long answer, but it's, it's kind of a lot of what I think uh, people, you know, in my generation are going through. I learned a lot from Gerard. I learned um, I learned to kind of push through some of the fears of things I didn't want to explore. And, and Gerard talks about this all the time where he says, I care about my parents. I really do. I care about my family so much. I don't want, I don't want them to be offended or hurt by anything that I'm making. Uh, Gerard is like, yeah, okay, cool, but we got to do this thing. <laughs> like that thing you told me, you know, because I would so many times say something, I'd be like, oh, man, really what I want to do is this, but I can't do that. And then Gerard would be like, no, you can and and I think that um, that part of our relationship has always been like really amazing, and 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 I think that it's you know it's just helped push the show in a really cool way, and um, yeah, I think he's learned from me. I mean, I think that you know he, I think you know as a creator, he's someone who's like working on a lot of things, and and I think that what's really I think probably unique about a relationship that him and I have is that uh, we're both stand-ups, but I think we're both like part of the same family of the type of stand-up that we do. And, and so I think we collaborate differently uh, than maybe he does with other people. And I think like when we kind of come into a conversation, it's it's really truly back and forth. So he doesn't have to be probably as hands-on as he is in other things. I'm just like trying to be good. You jerk off too much. 